So in the spirit of Iron Shapes Iron, this is my critique of casting shadows. For this critique, I'm going to start off by talking about what I would improve about the channel and end on what I really find are the strongest points of the shadow cast and what are doing great as they are. And as I critique, I'm going to start with the smallest, most petty types of uh, improvements that I would suggest and end on the larger ones. The very smallest point, the one I'm starting with, is to do with word whispers. Now you've done a great job of getting rid of the ums and ahs. I've seen some of your older videos and nowadays they're almost never heard. The next one I think you should work on, because you've clearly targeted that behavior, is the occasional click of your tongue. Most people probably don't even notice this, but since I spend a fair bit of time editing them out of my own videos, and the, the way I edit my videos makes it very easy for me to do this as long as I can find that half second that exists between when I've made some unintentional noise and when I started talking. You can probably remove that the same way you remove the ums and ahs just by being aware of it and it would be a very small but possibly noticeable change, maybe not noticeable to anyone beyond myself. Another small thing, try to reduce the volume of your intro music sometimes. It is occasionally difficult to hear you over that. Also, you do very soft fades between your shots, which is great, and it works very well with the artistic style you've selected. Uh, but there's a rule that still applies to uh, cuts of any kind, and that is to try to remove any silence around a cut. Now, if you've got something coming up, that's great, like a, a placeholder for a chapter or a section, that's fine. But it cut should never end with us looking at you just staring at the camera for a second before you start talking. It's, again, a very minor thing, and because you do soft fades, almost no one's going to notice that except for me. And finally, the problem that I fight with the most as well is finding a good way to end a show. I wish I had one, but endings on both of our episodes, I'm certain, are very abrupt. We need to find a solution. So one excellent piece of advice that you've offered me related to making the information in my videos more accessible to the viewer. And there is a somewhat minor thing that you can do to improve that for yourself with episodes such as the Shadowcast, where you'll often have, say, a 25 or 33 minute long video and it covers multiple topics. It would be helpful to have timestamps for what time the chapter headings are for each section, just to make things a little bit easier. If you get ambitious, you can also put videos, video links at the start so that somebody can click on the screen and cut directly to the point that they want to watch. But that can make the screen a little bit busy. It's up to you. Another thing that you can do is consider spacing out your videos a little bit. You have a tendency, it looks like, to film several videos in a row talking about a related set of subjects and put them up in fairly short order. It's not a bad thing, but it does help, at least for me, to keep me posting videos if I kind of have the next one in my head as I'm making one, as well giving me a week to work on a video or to think about it before I film it allows me to crystallize my, my mode of thought on it. Uh, there's a little bit of an issue sometimes whenever you've got a street shot and the background noise is a bit high. I'm not too sure if there's too much you can do about this. It's possible to dub over, but it would be kind of a shame to lose the street a little bit. Just be aware that if you're talking about something that might be difficult for a person to follow, be aware of the background noise for that. And finally, I may be wrong in this, but I believe that you make lists of some kind, possibly not scripting out your episodes entirely, but I'm pretty sure I catch you looking off at a, at a list sometimes, which is great. You organize your thoughts and have points to follow. However, I would encourage you, by all means use it, but if you're getting to an important point or one that you feel that you really want to make certain the user, sorry, the viewer is engaging in, make eye contact with the camera entirely during those points. It's a little bit trickier, but completely worth it. The last point I want to make is about keeping your audience focused. Now we're all aware nowadays people have very short attention spans and one has a tendency to drift in and out of what they're listening to as their own thoughts interfere and supersede what they were what they were 
focused on. You occasionally do monotone as you're covering your topics. It comes off as if you're reading from a textbook a little bit, and that's really something that you should, should be very careful of. Uh, listeners will often drift off in that case, even if they're interested in the topic. So you really should consider finding the way that you want to really engage the listener. Now, it's easy for me because I use shorter clips, but there's a way of looking at it. Some people would try to ask you how you see your audience, because it's a very important question. Uh, some people who create these types of videos will imagine themselves on a huge stage, and even though they're the only person on there, they're, they've got to give a lot of energy because they have to fill the stage with energy and project that onto their audience. I don't have quite that method myself. I tend to look at things a little bit more as if I was at the pub with a few friends and a topic of game design came up or game theory and I stole the spotlight out and empowered by a few beers I go off on my rant about whatever the topic may be. So I would ask you how you see yourself as compared to your audience. Uh, myself personally as an audience member I see you projecting yourself very much in a way of it being like a conversation with a professor at a dinner table. They're still your professor, they're still professional, and they still have that aspect to them, but they're speaking to you more on a personal level. That's a great thing to have. Maybe it's how you see things, maybe, it's, maybe you have a different point of view, but whatever way that you want to express yourself is what you should focus on in order to keep the viewer interested. Maybe interested isn't the right word. Connected. Now we get to talk about the strengths of the Shadowcast. And one of them is you have a very unique style to which you put out your videos. You're very professional and yet at the same time you, you come across as being very warm and sincere. That's definitely something that you should treasure and not, not let any of my advice interfere with. Um, you have a very strong knowledge of what you talk about and you support what your videos are about very well. I've looked at your blog, I've looked at your Google Plus page for Casting Shadows, they're all very well done. And those are the parts I know I'm not doing very well myself, so yes, you're putting your information out there in a fantastic way. So we really should focus on that. Find the videos, for me the videos that stood out to me uh, that really were engaging for, you, for me to, to watch and what I could really get into and kind of feel like I knew where you were coming from tremendously was the videos role playing skills and in character and out of character questions. Those are the ones that I remember watching and going, yes, this is something that you feel strongly about and you are really making me understand that. It's a fantastic channel. There's very few channels out there that really answer the why so much right now. And that's what makes Casting Shadows really interesting to me, because obviously that's the area that I'm most interested in. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to critique Casting Shadows, and I very much look forward, as always, to your next video.